Hey boys and girls, welcome back to Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch. In the last episode, we actually met the Great Sage of Ages and enlisted his help. But we also gained our first playable character, known as Esther the Familiar Tamer, which will allow us to actually get new familiars in our team. Anything we see out in the wild can now be ours, as long as we unlock the ability, which we will be in this episode. But other than that, we fought off with our first nightmare, and we also fixed our first closed heart, and we gained two new pieces of heart in the in the meantime. As of, we have the courage now unlocked, and we also have kindness. But with that, let's actually continue our story, because in the last one we were told that we need to go to the Temple of Trials, and we will be meeting a new face in this episode, so with that, Let's actually c continue on, and let's head on in to the Temple of Trials to meet our new, f new friend. Hmm, the Temple of Trials lies on the other side of this gorge. Perhaps this is a good place for a moment's respite. Hmm, Flipping Hickman, am I glad you suggested that? I am a forest fairy. Me, my fairy suit ain't even sandproof. Um, we're stopping already, but I could go on for ages yet. Um, really? Aren't you even a little tired? It's so hot. Hmm. You will endure far worse things as the, as the Temple of Trials, Oliver. Um, gee, so the trials are pretty tough. Huh. Hmm, indeed. That is why you must get some rest. I will keep watch. You will sleep. Hmm, and stay close to the fire. The desert grows cold at night. Um, alright, Mr. Rashad, sir. Okay, we'll take a nice little rest before we actually head into the Temple of Trials. I actually completely forgot this was a thing. And I don't know if this is a cutscene. It seems like it might be... It is. Okay, so I'll be right back, boys and girls. Why did you set out on this journey in the first place? Most people wouldn't dream of taking on someone like Shadar. Well, uh... It's my mom. I have to save her. Your mother? Uh, yeah. She... she died saving my life. But Mr. Drippy says there's a way to help her here in this world. So, you've come here to save your mother? Yeah, I guess. Wow. Huh? Doing all this? For the sake of someone you love. I just think that's amazing. I wish I had as good a reason as you for making this journey. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean I wish that... It's okay. But... Shadar is incredibly powerful. He breaks the hearts of anyone who defies him. So no one dares to resist. And they say no one can defeat him. I know that. But... I have to. You have to try, right? I... yeah. It's so strange. You don't look powerful in the least. But somehow, I just know you can beat him. I wonder why. Th thanks. Anyway, enough of that. It's late. Okay. And with that, we have officially learned a little bit more about Esther and how she thinks about this world. But, let's continue. Um, good morning, Oliver. Did you sleep well? Um, not really. I guess I'm a little worried about the trials. Um, oh dear. Well, I hope you won't doze off in the middle of them. Um, though I have to say, I didn't sleep very well myself. I kept thinking about that girl, my other self. It's so strange. She's not like me at all, but it doesn't feel like she's a different person. Mm, well, soulmates are funny like that, ain't it? Different but the same. There's profound. Anyway, are we taking the trials or what? Um, oh wait, that's Rashad. Hmm, Oliver, Esther, the Temple of Trials lies to the north of here. The tests that await you, they are unforgiving, but I have faith in you. Um, thank you, sir. Um, let's go, Oliver. I want to show you how brave I am, just like Myrtle did. <laughs> and with that, we officially 
The innocent goodness of the heart of the great sage's daughter has unlocked a new story in the Wizard's Companion. Oh, I'm actually, I've actually, was, I'm surprised about that one. I actually didn't even remember that she opens up a story. You obtained a new tale of wonder. Hmm, well, good timing for an unlock. But let's make our way into the Temple of Trials. And we're going to actually be in here for pretty much the entire episode. Knowing how long the Temple Trials actually is, because it's actually... I believe it's um, three trials altogether. You have one for courage, one for strength, and then you have one for, um, uh, what is it, insight or something like that? Smartness or something of the, something similar to that. But let's continue. Hmm, the temple is at last. The trials await. Hmm, blimey, it's a proper impressive this place is, eh? Shrouded in an air of potent mystery it is. Hmm. Did you expect less from the sacred he haven built to train the mighty sages? Um, did you train here, Mr. Sh Rashad? Of course I did. All who bear the name Sage must pass the trials. So Alicia would have taken the trials too. Um, Oliver. To become a sage, the candidate must possess purity of heart, breadth of knowledge, and mastery of both spells and familiars. The temple both tests the tempers. All of these qualities. And if we can't pass the trials, there's no way we'll ever be able to beat Shadar, is there? Mm, precisely. But even the gifts granted you on passing the trials will not be enough. You will need a far greater power to defeat the Dark Jin. Well, I guess we'd better just focus on the trials for now, huh? Mm, you are ready. It is time to release the seal. Okay. Let us on in, and let us into the great, great and powerful Solomon's Lair, because we're going to be meeting ourselves a new character in three... Oh, actually, I thought I was going to open it right away. Hmm, beyond this door awaits the Supreme Sage. It must be opened by your own hand. Um, yes, sir. And let's do this. One, two, three, let's meet the great and powerful Solomon. And here we go. Well, I'll see you guys very shortly because I know this is actually a cutscene. But I think it happens after we talk to this guy. Nope, it happens right now. Spear B, boys and girls. Uh, we, uh... So this is the Supreme Sage, is it? Ahem. <clears throat> Your Honor, we have come to perform the trials. Not... me. Huh? huh? Idiots! Oh. I'm the Supreme Sage! Oh! That's just my stupid servant on Bopa! Hm. <laughs> oh, I always love that cutscene. Um, what? Huh? Crikey, we got on the wrong one! Yes, we have. The Temple of Trials, the Proving Ground of the Sages, and our, where we're going to be probably here the entire episode. I'm going to be honest, this is actually going to be a longer episode due to that, since this place is going to be quite a bit. You have, I believe there's a boss fight, and then there's two tri main trials that you have to go through, which are little puzzles of their own. So, with that, let's continue. I can't believe it. The Supreme Sage is just a sweet little boy. Mm, sweet. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Your Honor. I don't care. I'm sweet and clever and handsome. I'm just so modest. I don't like it when people talk about it. Um, I see. Um, how did you lock in here anyway? Only people with my permission are allowed to open the front door. Mm, it has been a long time, Your Honor. Hmm, is that you, Rashad? Blimey, when did you get so old? You're ancient. Mm, but you have not changed at all, I see, Master Solomon. Um, did you know my father when he was young? He <laughs> how strange. Eh, father, you mean your... Um, yes, Your Honor. I present my daughter, Esther. Please forgive her rudeness. Eh, I don't care. What I care about is having a daughter. You having a daughter. How did that happen? You were always so shy and rubbish. Oh, well, congratulations anyway. What are you doing here? What do you want? These chi children, Master Solomon, Oliver and Esther, I would ask that you allow them to take the trials. 
Um, really? You're recommending them? You must think you're pretty good. That or you've gone bonkers in your old age. <laughs> um, I see great potential in them both. But they lack power. Hmm, beginners are ya. And you won't get stronger. Um, why what for? Um, I need to... I need to defeat Shadar. Um, like you? Beat Shadar. You do realize what you're saying, don't ya? Um, yes, your honor. And I'm going to help him. Oliver helped me, and now I'm going to pay him back. Hmm. Fine, but the trials are hard. Really hard. I know because I made them. We're ready, your honor. Heh. <laughs> it looks like you two m might be... O okay, I'll let you do them. Um, thank you, Master Solomon. We'll pass all the trials you'll see. M you have my thanks, your honor. Then I will take my leave. M you're going already? Boring. You should stay here. What's wrong, scared is to see them fail or something? Mm, he's right, Mun. After all we've done for you, and the least you can do is stick around and see these two through the flipping trials. Hmm, I cannot. I have duties of my own to attend to. I will not remain a Babana seller forever. I must prepare the walk, the path of the sages once more. Um, that's not the real reason, is it, Father? Why are you so desperate to go home? Oh, uh, don't you see? He wants us to take the trials without any help. We have to prove we can make it on our own. True. Um, you're right. Okay, Oliver, let's do our best. Um, good luck on your preparations, Father. Um, don't sell all the bananas, will you? <laughs> of course not, my child. When you complete the trials, you shall have all the babanas you could wish for. Good luck. Hmm, <laughs> come on, all this talking is boring. Let's talk and take the trials, shall we? Go on and ask a stupid old bumper. Uh, about what you have to do. <laughs> and with that, let's officially take the Trial of Ages, or Sages. And with that, just like that, we're pretty much ready here. Bobo will explain the trials. You will listen. There are three trials. The first trial is the test of wits. The second trial is the test of friendship. Pass these trials and there's a third trial. The test of strength. It is final trial. But first, you must pass the first two trials. The first two trials are the trial rooms to the left and the right of here. To learn about the trials, ask the trial monitors in the trial rooms. Good luck in the trials. And with that, I guess we pick either one. Which way do you want, we want to go first? First off, I say we should probably save and heal. Since healing it here would actually be a good thing since we are actually low on HP and on MP. So let's do that first. It looks like it is giving us one to go. Oh, actually, no, it doesn't actually have a specific one you want to go through. So let's go right since we're over here. And I believe this is the test, test of wits. Well, this is, this one's actually going to be a little bit harder than most of the other ones. I actually remember this one being a bit harder. Hmm, well met. This is a test of wits. The power of reception and reflection are the keys to solving these puzzles. Show me the wisdom upon which your kind provides itself on child of man. Hmm, okay. Well, um, first things first is we actually should talk to him first. Hmm, yes. Um, one... I thought he was going to tell us more about this. Okay, here we go. This is what we actually need. The dragon sees the warrior sword, while the bird is shown his shield. The beast, meanwhile, looks to his right and sees an empty field. Okay, so the beast is actually going to be fully on the right. And then the dragon sees the warrior's shield. So the warrior is going to be in the middle on the left. And then, meanwhile, to his right and sees an empty field. Okay. So it's actually different. Okay, so I actually had it a little bit wrong. Okay, so we need to use Puppet String. Enables the caster to manipulate statues and other objects as if they had a life on their own. Okay, so we use Puppet String here. And actually, this is actually supposed to go here because of how this is actually set. If we can drop that on top of here. Then we move the dragon to his left. Okay, if he gets in the s slot. I'm actually surprised. Okay, there we go. Okay. And then we need the beast, which the beast is open to an open field, so he needs to be all by himself with no other statues next to him other than the might. If I can get this to stay in place, there we go. I don't know if it's finicky or not, but I'm just being careful. And then this one should go here. Okay. 
And is that right, Mr. Um, Mr. Monitor Bird? Hmm? Okay, apparently that's not right. Unless it's not on the thing. Okay, well, let's try that again. <laughs> Just in case, because I know this, this should be right, based on... I'm pretty sure that's how that's supposed to go. Unless the beast is supposed to be the bird. Which could be honestly the case. Okay, let's hear this this again. Let me look at this again. The dragon sees the warrior's sword, while the bird is shown his sh- Oh, that's why I did it wrong. Okay, I did it wrong, okay. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Okay, <laughs> I'm stupid. It's been a while since I've done this puzzle. I thought the, um... So I was right, the mite is in the middle. And this goes right here. And then the mite goes here. Then the bird goes here. And then if just to make sure that all these are in place... It's actually kind of hard to make sure that they're actually directly where they need to be, if they need to or not. Okay, and that should be the answer then. Okay, how do you like that? Am I doing this wrong? Okay, I'll be right back. I feel like I'm doing this wrong somehow. Okay, so this should be the solution. I don't know why, but apparently the beast is actually the bird for some reason in that sentence, and I completely forgot about that being the case. If I did remember that, I would have remembered it completely. That was the only thing we did wrong, was that we put the dog dog beast that I would think would be the beast. Apparently, this is an empty field for the beast. But the beast is actually supposed to be the bird for some reason, even though the bird is specifically called the bird. I'm not sure why that puzzle's um, worded the way it was, but it's fine. I completely forgot that that one was kind of a trick question. Okay, so this one's actually pretty easy, but we will look at the hint just so you guys can get the full dialogue here. When the, they who lie above are one, with he that lies below, the great gateway would be opened up, and on would you go. Okay, so the idea here is you use your puppet string, and you actually have to ma um, kind of just match up the little face here with what is actually going on. Okay, so this one, I believe, goes right here. And then we got, let's see here, this one would be, that looks to be, trying to think of where that actually is, because specifically it's supposed to be a specific spot on the map, and it, based on what I can tell, it should be like right here-ish. And then this one, on the other hand, I believe is the middle of the mouth, I think. Yeah, somewhere in the middle here, if we can fit it right there. Okay, this one will go to probably right, trying to fit it. If the game will let me fit it, that is. No, actually, this one doesn't look right for that one. I think it's more like, let's see. Because the thing is, is that little um under part right here. Oh, wait, no, it's, it's perspective, that's why. Okay, I remember now. Okay, so this one... Let's see, goes like that, hmm, I think that is right here, yeah, that one's there, then this one is here-ish, yeah, that kind of looks right, okay, and then this one should go right there, perfect. Okay, it took me a little bit of thinking, but just like that, we're done with the next trial of wits. These aren't that hard. It's just the first one kind of throws you off because of, um, specifically the wording of it just threw me off a little bit because I, I was, like, confused. Like, why is this wrong? Because the dog should be the beast, which means he should be looking at an empty field, but for some reason the empty field's not working. Okay, this one looks, like, a little bit different, though. Mm, yes. Um, let's hear a hint. The bird is bound to a dragon in the moon, and on a star he sits. The beast links warrior moon and star, yet knows not where to fit. Okay, so the beast links to the warrior moon and star, yet not does not know where he fits. Okay, I actually don't remember how this one goes. I believe... Hmm. Okay. Warrior moon... The bird is bound to dragon and moon, and on on a star, he sits. Okay, so the bird is on the star, the dragon, and a moon. Okay, so dragon's in, on the sun then, 
And then the beast links to the warrior in the moon. Okay, so the warrior goes on the star, I think. Okay, this is actually going to be a bit of a hard one. Mm, I, I get it. The bird has to be on top of a star, and the lines have to join up to with, the, with a moon, and the dragon there, ain't it? Okay, maybe. Um, this is actually going to be a bit harder. I actually completely forgot this one. Okay, so... Based on how he said that, this has to be on a star. The dragon and the moon link up. And I think it goes in like places like this, I think. And then between the that and that, there should be, I believe, you. And then you should be here, maybe? Somewhere. I don't remember where, but he should be somewhere. Um, Let's see here. I'm trying to think of somewhere smart for him. Oh, actually, wait a minute. It might be a different one because of the fact that there's the star there. Because if we put you here, and then put you... Oh no, but it has to be a moon between them. Okay, so star goes here. Dragon goes here for sure then. And then the between, I think, the you and him. But I think it's actually this for this next one. And then you go here, I think? And I think I misplaced him because he's a little bit off the button a little bit. Okay, let me look at that hint now. Again, now that we have the bird and the dragon in the right positions, I think. The beast links to the warrior, moon, and star, yet knows not where to fit. Okay, so between the beast links to the warrior, moon, and star. Okay. So that means... Oh, maybe I am doing it a little bit different. Okay, so I think I actually know what it is then. Okay, so I believe it's actually you do have to put this on there. And then you move him to here, if he'll sit. They're very finicky, I think, so just in case. I think this should be right. Or, actually, wait a minute. Let me look here. Star, moon. Okay, so you should be here then. If the star and the moon has to be, be between you. And then... You here, I guess? I swear this looks right and it looks wrong at the same time. If this is wrong, I'll do a skip, but I feel like this just sounds right in a way. But let's try it. And it looks like it is indeed wrong. So I'll be right back. Sorry that this one's gonna be a couple cuts. Since I don't want to have you guys sit here and wait for me to try and figure out this puzzle. Because it could take me a... A couple minutes and honestly I feel like it's not good content to have me just struggling for 30 30 or 20 minutes trying to figure out one puzzle so I'll be right back boys and girls and I'll be right back and only take a second so beer be okay there we go okay so this was a little bit different than I thought it was well it's kind of my fault but honestly I completely forgot how that puzzle worked and it's kind of my fault for doing so but I'm gonna be honest, this specific trial actually doesn't really help us too much because of the fact that although this is the trial of sages, y these kind of puzzles don't really happen in the story. This is the only time you'll ever have to do a puzzle like this other than I believe it's the frog dungeon is the only time you do a puzzle like this that I remember of that like is a little bit hard but it's easy to figure it out once you like kind of sit down and just like look at it. But with that, we got this. Hmm, excellent. You have demonstrated your wisdom and passed the te test of wits. I hereby present you with the proof of your achievement. You have obtained the proof of wits. Hmm, keep your eyes and ears ever open. The knowledge you gain will serve you well. Hmm, it's not always brute force that wins the day. Often the word is mightier than the deed. Hmm, I understand. Thank you very much. And with that, we are done with the test of wits. Although I had to do a couple, a two cuts in between in order to get all of them because my brain is not ready for puzzles, I'll be honest. I just woke up. Or actually, technically, I didn't get enough sleep because of the fact that it's, um, I only got like an hour sleep and then I woke up and then I started recording because the whole point was I wanted to get some sleep so I have some more energy for you guys when I actually went and played the game. So, here we go. The test of friendship. This one's much easier. So how the test of friendship works is you have to use both buttons on both sides of the controller. 
Or, unless you're using a um, keyboard, I'm pretty sure you'd use WASD and the arrow keys. But I'm using an Xbox controller, but let's do this. Hmm, well met. This is a test of friendship. The road would open only to those who trust in each other. And walk forward as one. Stand atop the glowing switches to begin. Okay, so how this works is you gotta make both of them get to the end. While the panels are disappearing behind you. So you want to be careful with how you move them. And also smart with how you move them. Kind of like um, the Mario Party minigame. With, um, what do you call it? Where you're moving two characters at once on both sides of the controller. That's basically what this is in a nutshell. And just like that, we're done with that one. Hmm, I'm just saying what, if he says anything different. Nope, he's just asking if we want to abandon. Nope, I don't want to abandon. Okay, let's continue then. But yeah, this is pretty easy as long as you know what you're doing. Okay, let's move Oliver all the way up. Move you all the way to the right. Press this button. Let Esther start running for it. Move Oliver. Okay, so far so good. Wait for a button to appear for Oliver to move forward again. Okay, so far so good. I think Esther has to go back a little bit. Okay, so far so good. Press the button. Run Esther all the way past the green section here. Okay, run Oliver up forward and over to the next point. Easy peasy. Now we just gotta do this one. Okay, right down the middle. I believe it starts getting faster too as well, so you have to always keep your wits about you so you don't mess this up. Okay, moving them once at one at a time just in case because I do want to make sure that we do this right. Because I don't want to mess this up because this is actually pretty easy as long as you're like fully um, fully watching what's happening on screen. So just in case I'm trying to make sure that we are doing this right. Okay, press both buttons, run forward, and I believe we are indeed done. Just like that. Pretty easy. As long as you're paying attention, you, you can easily beat that one. Unless you've never played the um, mini game from, I think it's the second Mario Party. I think it's the one with the, um, well, there's one with a rope that connects you and your, um, your teammates, so you can't run. Oh no, it's Mario Party 7. That's the one I'm thinking about, because there's Waluigi in it. Okay, so how it works is you have a string attached to tie, or tied to both your characters, and there's, um, eight player mini games in that game. So you have multiple controllers moving characters at the same time. So, the idea is that you have one player playing on this part of the controller and one player playing on this part of the controller and you're both moving and the idea is that you have to trust your uh, your teammates to continue walking forward when people ended up playing with both the um playing two characters at once when i played it so it, the idea was to always um kind of remember where your uh, movements are and how and remember that the limitations of the minigame itself and stuff like that. It was it's pretty fun. But so that's how I always played it with um you play one person playing two characters for that minigame. And it always uh, made it easier and easier once you kind of figured how the how the limitations worked and everything. But with that, we are done. Hmm, excellent. You have demonstrated the strength of the bond between you and pass the test of friendship. I hereby present you with proof of your achievement. You have obtained the proof of friendship. Hmm, stand together in the face of hardships that await you, and I believe in another above all else. Do so, and you will always pre prevail. Um, we will. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you indeed, Monitor Bird. And that's probably the last time we see that little bird. But with that, we are done with both the main trials. Now to the final trial, the test of strength. And that is a different can of beans entirely, because we'll be fighting off with a giant monster in, in, a, in, in a nice few, um, maybe even a minute. So, let's do this. Hmm, you passed the first two tests. Not bad. Um, now we know you're good friends and you're not completely stupid. Hmm. And we also know my powers of encouragement and support can work miracles tidy. Um, hey, you had nothing to do with it. Anyway, Oliver, it's time. Uh, the final test. What is it, Mr. Master Solomon? Huh, <laughs> everyone knows that. It's the test of stri strength, stupid. This is the test of your combat ability. You've guessed what you have to do, haven't you? Um, we're going to have to fight somebody. Huh. 
Oh, aren't you clever. But not just anyone. <laughs> You're going to get your heads beaten in. Oh, but I didn't want him smashing the place up, so I prepared a special place for you to fight in. Anyway, you probably need a rest first. Because you've, um, you're so small and weak, I'll be waiting here when you're ready. Um, yes, Your Honor. And with that, we'll be preparing for the test of strength now. So let's do a nice, um, heal and a nice save. And we should be ready for the test of strength now. Prove your worth in the final challenge, the test of strength. And honestly, I'm going to be honest here, so this being the 8th episode, I looked back at the um, the original series. I'm going to do this every 4 episodes just to see how fast we've gotten through, because in the original series, the Test of Strength was episode 18. We're only on episode 8. We're, we've literally been doing really well with this game, and actually making sure to keep on pace and not be stuck completely where... Because I didn't use um, cuts like I do now, where I'm actually smart in using them. Because originally, I didn't really... I wasn't really a YouTuber, as I said. I didn't understand how to use my editing software. I didn't understand how audio worked. I didn't understand how OBS worked. And I didn't know you could just do stuff like this, where you just press one button and you could go, like, basically turn off your camera. Sorry for... I should have probably said an epilepsy warning there, but... Yeah, sorry about spamming that, but that's honestly, I'm just happy that I'm finally grown to the point where I'm like know what I'm doing, and that's honestly a good thing. But let's talk to Solomon and let's do the test of strength. Hmm, it's time for the test of strength. Are you wimps ready? Yes, I am. Take the test of strength. Um, that was that's what I like to hear. Good luck in there. Uh, you'll need it. <laughs> yes, we will. So, where does this last trial take place, Mas Master Solomon? Um, in my special secret place. Watch this. Okay. And, this is actually not long of a cutscene based on what I remember. Abracadabra indeed. And just like that, a magical secret door will pop out of the floor and greet us with a new area to go into. But, once we go through that door, I'll be turning off the camera because I honestly, um... It's easier for me to um, get stuff for thumbnails when um, when certain cutscene po cutscenes pop off because one this is going to be a boss so I would like that to be the cut uh, the actual background for the thumbnail itself and also because it does have its own cutscene anyways because that was a, that was the main reason for me turning off um, the camera is because I want you guys to kind of chill out with the cutscenes and also it gives me time to kind of like fill in some of the stuff that I needed to remember so I get to sit down and just listen to the story. Because honestly, I like that, and it makes it easier for me to kind of explain certain things that I like to kind of, like, elaborate on some of the, some of the themes and some of the things that the game is talking about after each and every cutscene. So, with that, let's do, let's do this. Um, amazing, he conjured a door out of thin air. Hmm... You have to go through it just to get to where the test of strength is. It's a little place called the Solosseum. Hmm, tidy. You ready for the final test, Donnie boy? Um, we have to pass it. We just have to. Um, I'm ready. Come on, you guys. <laughs> yep, come on, you guys, indeed. And honestly, the funny thing is, is there's actually another form of a Solosseum, but I'm going to talk about that during the boss fight. So beer be, boys and girls, because in three... Two, one, I'll be seeing ya. This is the final trial. This looks a bit flippin' serious. <gasps> ah, jeepers. Oliver, look. And with that, we are officially in the fourth boss fight of the game. Or technically fifth if you count the Nightmare, but I'm going to count him as kind of like um, how the Guardians and Hickory Dickory were. Or Hickory Dock, I should say. But yes, we are officially in our technically what would be our fifth boss fight. And Bashura is definitely something to worry about. But thankfully we do actually have what we need for this fight, because... 
little Ivern here is actually what we need because he's a fire type and water bomb is actually his weakness based on what I remember and I was right in teed. And thankfully little Ivern here is actually going to be really good for us to use here. We just got to be smart, use our abilities wisely, soul seal. Oh wait, we can't command everyone yet because we don't have the ability to. Okay, I'm going to actually have Esther um, get healed real quick. Because of the fact that... Oh, here we go. Oi, only boy, this BC here is got a big old shield protecting his back, ain't it? Better give him a good old whacking from the front, I reckon. Oh, yeah, I completely forgot about that, actually. Okay, um, I'm actually gonna have, um... Her actually do things. Um, let's see here. Uh, do what you like. And then I'm gonna have you give it your all. And then we're gonna go okay. I'm gonna also... I think double healing to heal, uh, touch them. Mind over matter, he's actually going to do a big attack there. We should probably back off. Okay, perfect. Okay, there we go. But yeah, as I was saying, the Solosseum is actually something in its own right. Because there's going to be a post-game um, thing where we'll actually be fighting a bunch of enemies. And it's going to be, um, well, Sol it's Solomon's way of kind of giving us a final challenge to kind of get ready for everything. Okay, I can't actually get her to back off from that since we don't have the ability to kind of command our characters yet. We won't be able to do that until we actually have um, Swain. Because for some reason they don't give you the ability to do all that yet. And I'm surprised they don't. Oh wait, we gotta move into his front area here. Mind over matter. Back up a little bit. Okay, so far so good. Ooh, little blue glim. I'm gonna grab that real quick. Because we do need to get ready for when... We do send in Ivern again. Okay, start sending you in a little bit. Gotta walk around him since the shield does block off a lot of the damage. Back off a little bit. I don't know if there's a way to force her to actually follow you at the early game stuff. Because I remember the allies not being too smart in the first few boss fights until you actually have the ability to fully command them. Okay, as long as we're careful, we should be fine here. I know I'll be fine, but... There's always the chance that Esther will go down because of something stupid. Like she runs into the enemy on accident. As long as we... As like just there. As we see, Esther is down. But I should be perfectly fine. As long as I play um, play right. Okay. Back off a little bit from Bashura. We want to make sure that we're not taking full frontal damage from him. Like from his little, little mind over matter attack. We're also going to make... Uh oh, Devastation. Okay, we want to go into you. We don't have enough time to get into Groot. Okay, I need to be more careful about that one. Because if we don't, we're actually going to die here. So let's be smarter about this and actually heal first. Okay, heal first. Okay. And actually, we can't even use Ivern yet. So we're going to actually use a little Spook here since we're not really in the mana business right now. Okay. Oh, actually, we can't... We cancels his attack. Okay, perfect. I actually didn't even expect that. Okay, I need you to go all in, little spook, as much as you can here, bud. Because now that Bashur is actually not attacking us, this is actually the perfect time to go in. Okay, I'm going to grab this supercharge, get our free heals, back up a little bit from him, and slash dance him from the front. Since he can't block this from where he is right here, because the shield is actually going to block the damage. But thankfully, we're in front of him, so it should attack him no matter what. There we go, 59 damage. He's getting ready for another Mind Over Matter. Let's keep our stamina if we can. Okay, send back in Little Spook. Smack him a couple times. Might be able to cancel out his next attack. Or we can just run back a little bit. Wait for him to use it again. And go back in. Just like that, we just gotta kite him. That's all you have to do for boss fights. Just play safe. Be sure to back off when need be. And go back in when you have the chance to. Because it's all about going after their weak points. Oh, we canceled him during his devastation attack that time. Perfect. Okay, just smack him. Because now that he actually doesn't have the chance, we can actually get some freebies in here. Got two nices in a row, which is really good. I think that actually cancels out two of his movements. Okay, just keep attacking him. Sadly, we didn't get a golden glim there. But we did knock him out again. <laughs> uh, nice try, little Bashura. But you gotta try harder than that if you want to beat me. I may be probably underleveled at this point, but honestly, I do know what I'm doing, and as long as you know what you're doing, you should be pretty much fine here. Okay, there we go. Now that he did that, 
Let's actually use Groot here since we can use a water bomb. Since he is kind of in our area. So we can kind of deal with him. Okay. Groot, I need you to... Ooh. I see a water bomb location. Gonna go for that. Hit him with another water bomb. Here you go, buddy. Okay. Just a little bit more damage. I think that's just a couple more hits with Little Spook here. Just wait for his mind over matter. Run in. Smack him like once or twice to get a couple little hits in. And then get ready for a devastation if he comes in and tries to. Okay, just keep hitting him. Mind over matter. Back up. Wait for him to do his little force field. Okay, go in for the go um, for the heal glim. And then, let's see here. Looks like he's getting ready to jump, so we'll back up a little bit. Jump back in. Smack him a couple more times. And he should be pretty much down here. And we cancel down his devastation for a second time. And he is down for the counts. Down goes Bashura. And the fifth boss of the game is completely donezo. And just like that... We actually now gain the ability to get ourselves some new familiars, because that was the whole point of this. And Esther is now level 11, so even though she went down, she actually got something out of it. Spirit of the Temple, 360 gold, and we also got a bunch of levels, which is good. Okay, with that, we can actually continue on now. I probably should have give a, um, given Esther Julian just so she had someone else to attack with, since Gogo is actually completely spell-based. And I kind of, like, messed her up because Esther is spell-based and Gogo is spell-based. So she didn't actually have anyone to actually do physical damage. I probably should have just given her Julian because that would have helped her out a little bit. But she also learned Sea Sense. Okay, cool. And you've also obtained a page describing Bashura. Let's see if I can kind I can kind of read it, so let's do this. The final challenge that awaits those who would prove themselves worthy of the title of Sage. Though it appears to be made of stone, Bashura comes to life when people approach and shows to many shows no mercy as it brings its four mighty arms to bear bear upon them. Okay, that's kind of hard to read. I'm surprised those pages are so small, but I'm pretty sure you're supposed to actually open up the book to read those. <laughs> but I'm just doing it because I know you can still read it as long as you like look close enough. But with that, we finished up the Trials of the Sages, and let's do this. Eh, you passed the Tile of Strength. <laughs> tile, the Trial of Strength, oops. You've obtained the Proof of Strength. Um, we did it, Oliver, we did it. We sure did. Hmm, that's the last trial. You passed them all. Oh, I got you a graduation present. Um, so here. You've received a page describing the bridge spell. A wizard, um, find a way even across the greatest impasse. A wizard's progress is frequently obstructed by rivers, gorges, and other such inconveniences. This spell allows you to build a bridge across such obstacles and proceed with your journey. The search for the truth must go on, after all. Okay, we also got another one, Broom Broom. You've received the page describing the Broom Broom spell. Breathe life into the Cloud Sweeper and take to the skies. Cloud Sweepers are the latest fad in flying contraptions. Semi-magical, they require a little require a little help to get off the ground. Help in the form of this all ab absurdly named spell. Simply knowing the, this name won't enable you fly one. However, that apparently requires a certain amount of innate ability and great deal of training. Be sure or. Be aware that learning to fly Cloud Sweepers does not distract you from your wizarding studies. Hmm, okay, that's kind of cool. I don't remember you actually being able to fly with that, though. But I'll take it, I guess. Um, new spells. Thank you very much, Master Solomon. Tidy, they look like proper useful ones, too. Hmm, of course they are, stupid. I wouldn't give them rubbish ones, would I? Anyway, it's time for the main events. My specialist subjects familiars. I'm going to teach you for the secrets of creature taming. Um, creature taming? Oh, that sounds interesting. Heh, <laughs> you're a bit annoying, but at least you're enthusiastic. Okay, first let's talk about the serenading. Um, what's serenading? Um, I'm just about to tell you, aren't I, stupid? It's something you can't do without a special instrument you first start. Um, an instrument? So that means... Um, yep, leave it to me, Oliver. Um, I'd better give you it before we carry on. Um, Bopa, 
Hmm, Master? <laughs> please give us that little harp, please, because that's actually why we couldn't get ourselves any, um, any familiars yet. Master. <laughs> I love him, Bopa. We don't get to hear him that often, but I like his little voice because he reminds me of, like, an old, like, old beefy sage, basically. Like, what you act- because they actually thought he was a great sage, of all things, which was kind of funny. And he honestly does sound like one, too, which is kind of funny. You have obtained the heart-winning harp, and with that, we officially can get ourselves some familiars. I got confused in the last episode thinking that you already had the ability to, and I completely forgot you actually had to do the test of trial or the trial of the sages to actually get the ability to. So now that we actually have this, we can actually get ourselves some new familiars. And that means we get a whole new cast of familiars to use. Although I don't know which ones we will use throughout the story yet. That will come in time. But let's do this. Um, it's not it's not just beautiful, it's useful too. You can play it on you can play it to tame creatures and make them your familiars. It's probably easier to show you than explain. You're quite slow after all. That's a little rude. But, there we go. We got ourselves a couple new familiars to use. Although, honestly, based on the ones that they actually have available to us, I think it might be better that... I think we should use the healing one because of the fact that... It's better to have support characters... And as long as you're using support characters, um, you, you should always have one per character. So I feel like we should probably get the, um, Dryad, I think it's called. It's the one all the way on the right. Um, I prepared three creatures for you to tame. Big one you like the look of. Um, yes, your honor. Mmm, you can tame creatures during battle. Try it out with these ones. Uh, don't look so scared. They, they're my pets. They won't attack you. Hmph, <laughs> wimps. Um, but how do I tame them? Well, even now and again, uh, every now and again, when you beat a creature, it will be so impressed it will fall in love with you. If, if that happens, Yucky Hearts will appear above its head, like this. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. Uh, anyway, when you see these hearts, it's time for you to play a serenade. If you manage to not mess it up, the creature becomes tamed, and joins you as one of your familiars. Um... That seems simple enough. Um, it doesn't matter who beats a creature. It can still go all gooey and girly and lovey-dovey. But only if you can tame an Esser. Um, so if we want a creature to join us, Esser has to play the song. Um, it's just, uh, I just said that, didn't I? Stop asking stupid questions and give it a try. Um, yes, your honor. But which one shall we pick? Hmm, why don't we, fl why don't we have a flipping pick? Can't have... Can't he give us the whole lot of them, the stingy old so-and-so? Hmm, what's the matter, spoiled for choice? Well, when you've finished moaning and groaning, just let me know which one you want me to give you, completely for free. Hmm. Okay, so... I do like this little guy here, but... I feel like it might be smarter to actually go with these... these little guys. Because these things are actually pretty good. No, they're called Naiads. This cute creature is called a Naiad, so there. It's not very good at normal attacks, but it's got some decent magical ones. It's a great healer, so it's useful to have around. Um, you should definitely choose that one over the other two. They're pretty rubbish. Okay, so the Naiad is actually something strong. It's actually going to be a mage later in the game. I believe it gets only one um, physical attack, or magical attack. But it's, um, it's actually a really good one, based on what I remember. We can probably save off on grabbing one, the, one of these, because it does require a lot of training. So I think we should go for something different this time. So let's go for this little ghost guy, because I actually didn't use this guy before. And honestly, I like the look of him. He looks like a little ghost cat, and I actually really like that. He kind of reminds me of um, like the little ghost Pokemon from... Um, well, I don't know exactly which one it reminds me of. It kind of reminds me of Mimikyu in a way, though. I don't know why, though. Or Pumpkaboo, for instance, is another way of thinking of it. Hmm, boo. Heh <laughs> Uh, this one's called a Bongoli Boo. It may be, it may have a stupid name, but it can scare the pants off people even worse than me. It packs a hefty punch and can learn some pretty nasty tricks, too. <laughs> you should definitely choose that one over the other two. They're so rubbish. Hmm. <laughs> And let's check the last one. Bada boop bop bop 
part. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's a weird way to introduce yourself. That stupid looking one's called a Shonky Honker. It's uh, got good defense and magical attacks. It can put enemies to sleep as well. It's a bit of an all-arounder, I suppose. You should definitely choose that one over the other two. They're pretty rubbish. I like how you call all of them rubbish. That means they're all rubbish, isn't doesn't that what that means? Okay, let's grab this guy then. We'll do this one since... I believe we should use something new. Although I really like the Nyad, I remember using it quite a bit. I'm actually going to use this little guy. So, Boggly Boo, I want you to join me. Oh wait, we have to actually talk to him directly. Okay, I have the one that I want. Um, have you decided which one you want to, um, be your familiar yet? Um, yes I have. Um, Renny, we might as well do it the same way as you do. When you tame a creature in a normal battle. In case you've forgotten, that means you have to beat the creature up. Then get Esther to play and serenade on it. On the harp. And don't wet your pants, I've told them not to attack you, so wimps don't get scared and run away. Now to the battlefield. And to the battlefield indeed. So let's get ourselves a boggly boo. Because, um, one... I actually believe we can't get one of these for uh, quite a while to begin with, but the Nyads are actually, um, I think we can get the Shonky, um, Honker guy, um, actually very soon. I think he's actually, like, one dungeon away. The Nyad is, um, I believe two dungeons, and then Boggly Boo is, like, three, because he's actually over by, I believe, Hamlin, which is far from here. We actually have to cross the ocean to get to Hamlin, so we won't be able to actually get a Boggly Boo for quite a while, so honestly, I feel like it's probably smarter to get him now, as is, but let's do this. Right then, Donner Rashad, are you ready? You're the only one who can use that harp. You better try it out, hadn't you? Okay, so, yes, there it is. Um, right, listen, these three creatures here have to pick, um, you have to pick one to be your new familiar. You know you have to tame a creature, don't you? First, you have to beat it in battle. These ones are friends of mine, so I've told them not to fight back. When you bash them, well, come on, beat up the creature that you want to be your new best friend. Okay, so, Boggly Boo, let's do this. Sorry, little buddy, I gotta smack you in the face a little bit. Oh yeah, your area of effect damage. Okay, we should probably get away from the other one then, just in case. Okay, is there an easier way of doing this? Because I'm pretty sure we could just- Oh no, we actually have to straight up just attack him with Esther. Okay, little buddy, I'm gonna smack you a couple times in the face with my harp until we actually get you. Because that's the only way we're doing this. Okay, one more time. And there we go. And now we just do a serenade. Okay, and if it'll let me. There we go. Ah, look at that! It's on Monet's feet again! Creatures do that sometimes when you beat them in battles. You see those yucky pink hearts over its head? You, that, they mean you can tame it. If Esther's near a creature with hearts over its head, she can use her command. Um, well, then she can choose whether to play a serenade to tame it or let it go back into the wild. But if you don't choose quickly, it'll run off anyway. I've told these ones not to run away because you're beginners and you're probably rubbish. Okay, let's do a nice little tame and serenade the little Boggly Boo. And I believe after we actually um, tame this little Boggly Boo here, we actually get um, access to the um, the creature retreat, which is actually where we'll be able to claim those little tickets we got from the very beginning of the game. Okay, so what should we name you? I actually don't have a name for you yet, but let's see here. I want to name you... Hmm... Actually, I don't have an idea. I actually don't have an idea for you. Let's look at the suggestions and maybe it'll give us something. BB Boggly Boggles. Um... Hmm... Hmm... I actually don't know one. I'll be right back. I'm going to think of a name real quick, because I actually want something that works with him. So I'll be right back. Okay, it took me a little bit to think of a name, but I thought of some things, and honestly, I think I know what it is. So I'll give you the rundown of the couple names I went through. I went through Lance. I also went through Roadhog. I also went through ideas of the fact that I thought he looked like one of the familiars you would get from Isaac. So, 
as of as of the as of right now, I've been actually playing a lot of Isaac recently. And honestly, when once I thought that he kind of looked like the familiars from Isaac, I thought of maybe naming him Guppy, being one of the many transformations in the game, which actually has a small familiar that's attached to it, being the little cat head. And since he is a little cat, as what we can tell, he looks like he's well. Based on some of his um, upgrades, there is I Moggle Boggle, I think it's called, because I actually looked at the um, metamorphoses and stuff to kind of give me a hint. So he's got a pig form, and he's also got a cat form. So honestly, I feel like Guppy would be a good name for him, since he is a little cat ghost. And with that, we will now add Guppy to our team. Would I like to call Boggly Boo Guppy? Yes, I would. Guppy is now your familiar. And with that, we are we should be strong now if we're going based on Isaac rules. Because once you have Guppy, you basically beat the game most of the time. And if you somehow lose, it's more of a unfortunate thing. Because usually Guppy means you win. Because it takes three items of Guppy to actually get the transformation. And the transformation is really overpowered due to the fact that uh, flies in that game, every single time you're shooting, it actually spawns flies. And flies are really overpowered in that game due to how they work since they scale off your damage. But with that, we now have Guppy on our team. Um, we did it! We tamed a creature! <laughs> not bad for your first try, I suppose. Like I said, anyone can beat a, beat a creature, but Ezra has to play the song to tame it. So, you'll have to work together if you want to get more familiars. I know it's harder for selfish brats like you, but you'll have to try. Um, yes, Master Solomon, we understand. Uh, neato, huh, sir? Oh, and you, can you, uh, you can have three or more familiars as well as the ones you use in battle. Mmm, tidy. But we ha what happens if we get all overexcited and tame more familiars than we got room for? Mmm, then you'll have to speak with our little friend of mine. Uh, look over there for a second. And this is actually the familiar retreat guy, because once we actually unlock the ability to tame familiars, we actually have to have the ability to get rid of some. And this is the guy that's going to help us. Hmm, what a funny looking little thing. Is he a familiar too? Honestly, he kind of looks like he would be one. Hmm, don't be stupid. That's the rep for the familiar retreat. Ooh, it's one of those guys. Okay, so... I was talking about the XP familiars, and if you can actually um, fight them, you actually get lots and lots of experience. This little guy in the picture right next to this little guy that's going to be the familiar retreat guy, he's actually a really, really hard thing to get, since it is a rare chance for him to spawn. I would like to get one on my team, because I don't think I used one, because I think they're actually strong as well as being good for experience. So if we can maybe get one, I would like to try to use one for our series, because we have to, one, chase him down, and he's faster than us. So we need to somehow get behind him, get into a, into a fight with him, knock him out before he runs from the fights, and then hopefully tame him. So it might take a while until we get one. I might go off episode and try and get one if there is one in the area, just because of how long it could take to get one. But... I'll think about that one, because we won't do it now, but I'll think about it later once we get to, I'm going to say, by the next town, if we don't have one, I'll think about doing that off episode and then announcing it that we did get one. So, with that, let's continue. Uh, don't be stupid. That's a rent for the familiar retreat. He'll take any familiars you don't need off your hands and keep them safe back in the retreat. Hmm, okay, thanks. Oh, and there's your troll. Uh, looks like you'll be keeping busy then, eh, yes, sir? Um, I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to see what kinds of creatures there are um, out there to team. Hmm, you can find familiar treat holes in every town you visit, and even in some dangerous places, too. Hmm, I think I've seen some in places we've been already. Yes, we have, actually. Hmm, hang on. Look, your familiar is ready to metamorphose. Uh, meta what? Hmm, blimey. I have to teach you about that as well, do I? Uh, you don't know anything, fine. I'll teach you about metamorphosis too. But give me a break first, will ya? Explaining this is going to give me a face ache. Okay. We'll do the, um, familiar retreat real quick. 
Mm, Oi, Solomon's trying to st uh, still got some stuff to tell you, man. Where, what, where are your manners? Oh, I thought he was giving us something. Okay. Well, why didn't he just tell us? Okay, I'm confused there. Uh, right, it's time to teach you about metamorphoses. Uh, this is boring, so listen carefully. I'm not explaining it again. If you look, uh, you can see your familiar once to metamorphose. And for that one, you'll need to use one of these here. Okay, you got ourselves a sun drop. Okay, I'll definitely take that. Is this some kind of treat? Uh, that's not just any old treat. Look, just try it, William. I'm bored of talking. Give it to that mite you got there. Uh, feed it to him. In the creature's cage, you mean? Okay, here goes. Okay, so it's actually going to force us to use it, I think. Even though I don't really want to, I'm actually going to use, um... I think we should probably use our uh, chocolates real quick, since... One, we have enough of them. And it's honestly better that we actually go through and give him enough that he actually gets full off of, because I think it actually cancels out all the ones that you do have. So I'm going to do this real quick, because one, it's better that you use this now before metamorphosizing, because of the fact that you won't be able to do this again. Um, I don't think... Hmm... I think attack and defense is what we should focus for the spook here, since he's going to be more of our um, attacker and our defender, since he's going to want to have a lot of defense because of the fact that he is basically blocking all of the damage that we take, so it's probably smart if we actually boost up his defense as much as possible. I think the cake actually... nope, it doesn't. Okay, so just keep using the little flans then. Just raise it as much as we can, because we can only use this so many times until he gets full. And then once he gets full, you kind of have to you have a timer on your hands. Let's see here. I think, um, hmm, accuracy could be good, but evasion could be fine as well. But, hmm, I'm going to go with, I think accuracy we should save for other characters, because there's much harder characters to hit with. And as you can see, he has 47, so it's not the hardest thing. I think evasion would be smarter. This will, Since he's always front close combat, it's probably better that he raises his evasion a little bit. Okay, now that we're done with that, now we can use our sun drop. Allows a sun sign familiar to metamorphose into a second form. Would I like to feed my familiar sun drop? Yes, I would. And this is where we'll get to see that there is new species types. So, I believe we are giving up the 50 attack because of the fact that we won't be able to get it now but we should be fine i think so i think we should be tra because we can't actually cancel this out so let's go into mighty might we'll be able to learn fling flame roly poly war cry petrifying poke and slice and dice but he also becomes a lot stronger but he also becomes level one again and that means he has to actually go through training again since he actually does lose out on some of his stats since he'll lose HP, and he'll also l lower in attack and defense a little bit as well. So it makes him pretty easy to knock out, so we won't be able to use Little Spook for a little bit. But Little Spook metamorphosized into Mighty Might. The number of different tricks Little Spook can perform in battle has increased by one, so now he can use one more spell, which is always good. The more spells we can use, the more we can do. Um, Nito, look at my familiar. Hmm, that's fit metamorphosis. When a familiar gets big, you can feed it special treats to make it change into a new version. Um, metamorphosis. Got it. Um, when familiars metamorphosize, they get stronger, look different, and learn better tricks. They also get a uh, get to gobble up more gems, meaning you can teach them even more tricks. Uh, the treat you need to feed to a familiar to make it metamorphosize depends on its sign. Something you never have worked out on your own. Oh, and here's another piece of priceless wisdom you don't deserve. When a familiar is metamorphosized, they go back to level 1. But that doesn't mean you're back to square 1. Once you train them up, they'll be much more powerful than they were before. Whether you metamorphosize your familiars is, or not is up to you. Some idiots prefer to stick with what they got. So don't do wait what you want. I don't care. Okay, we will be definitely metamorphosizing since it's more better that we do that since we don't want to get to a point where we're behind because we didn't metamorphosize. Because again, a lot stronger, as he said, if you do metamorphosize. So probably metamorphosizing is in our best interest, unless we want to really want to spell or something. But other than that, we got this. Hmm, now you don't need anything else explaining, do you? You're fine with that when I told you, right? Um, yes, Master Solomon. 
Uh, good. I hate explaining all that stuff. Anyway, if you want to hear all that boring details again, you can just ask that boring old telling stone you got there. Um, hmm, did somebody say my name? Hmm? Hey, buddy. Hmm, it is as the supremacy says. I can replicate his explanations in a minute detail, and at any time you choose. You need only ask and... Uh, boring. Ugh, you haven't changed. Anyway, now you know how it all works. You can get out of here and tame loads of familiars and make them metamorphosize. Um, thank you very much, Your Honor. Hmm, ta your supreme dude. Right, where to next then? Um, honestly, not sure. Um, can we go back to Alma Moon quickly? I want to see how my father is getting on. Hmm, uh, sure. We can ask him about the other great sages, too. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Master Solomon. Thanks for everything. Uh, don't mention it. I mean, I mean it. Shut up and get lost. <laughs> honestly, his face does not honestly show that he acts like that. But once you actually talk to him, you, you notice how rude he can actually be. Well, let's do a save, and let's actually look at what we can do here. Because I do actually want to look at the familiar retreats. Because one, you actually get more um, metamorphosizing stones from him. And you also can kind of like learn about the familiar tree a little bit. Um, hello, hello. I'm your friendly familiar retreat representative. Pleasure, I'm sure. If any of your familiars are proving to be a burden, just let us know. We can take up to 400 of the little blinders onto our care. Today, as a first-time visitor, you've been titled to a very special introductory gift. You lucky devil. Enjoy, enjoy. You have obtained three vials of Great Sage's Secret. I forgot you got that. You have obtained three Jumbo Sun Drops, three Jumbo Star Drops, three Jumbo Moon Drops, and three Jumbo Planet Drops. That's actually all the star signs. I believe you can actually use your tickets here, if I'm right. Or it's Solomon himself that does that. I think it's Solomon, actually. Let's talk to him. Uh, it's you again. Uh, missing me, were you? I bet you were. What are you screwing your face up like that for? Have you got your hands uh, on a familiar ticket or something? You can exchange them for super mega ultra rare familiars. Okay, so we can actually use these if we really wanted to. And honestly, I feel like I kind of want to. Um, and honestly, I feel like I should go for trying to think of which one I want. I want to do one that's, um, one that I haven't used before, and I know that I'm going to have fun with it. So, because all three of these, I've barely, I barely used the Draggle, because of the fact that it was during my first playthrough, where I didn't understand what I was doing, and then I did a restart, so I never got to use them again. But, honestly, I kind of want to use this Griffy, because I've never actually seen this familiar, or this Flutterbee, for instance. So, honestly, I'm kind of interested in seeing what this Flutterbee looks like. You know what? Let's do... I'm going to close my eyes. One, two, three, one, two, three. And we are in this section, so that means left. Okay, Flutterbee then. Okay, Flutterbee it is then. Okay, that's one, the one we're going with. The Flutterbee will become your familiar. Please enter a name. Oh, he's actually a bee. Oh, he's cool looking. Okay, I'm actually happy with this. Honestly, you kind of remind me of Hollow Knights in a way. But you also remind me of the, um... There is a boss that's like a giant bee boss that kind of looks like this. But honestly, I want to name you Hollow. I honestly like that name, so I'm going to name you that, just because you remind me of Hollow Knight. I actually did not even know you were familiar. Oh, he's pretty cool. I actually like this. Okay, welcome to the team, Hollow. And he's definitely joining my team now that I see him. And Hollow is now your familiar. <laughs> I'm sure you and your new friend are going to get along famously. You don't mind being bitten, right? <laughs> okay, let's actually take a look at him. I've never seen this familiar before. Ooh. I like him. What is he exactly um, in stats-wise? Because I don't know. He's got major movement speed. He's got... His attack is close to his magical defense. Or magical attack. Okay, so 6 to 9. Uh, defense and magical defense is kind of similar. Hmm, okay. He uses horns and claws. He uses cloaks and he uses scales. Okay, so... Does that mean he's a physical attacker, then? Um, kind of. 
He but he uses wind-based magic as well, so maybe he's kind of like both in a way. Huh, that's kind of cool. Okay, so yeah, I'll definitely use him. But with that, we're actually going to end this episode off here. Unless, actually, we should probably leave the Solomon, uh, Solomon's Lair here first before we actually fully make that decision. Due to the fact that there could be a cutscene on the outside of here. And I don't want to get stuck inside of Solomon's little lair here. So, if we can, I would like to actually be able to move freely. So, just in case we are, we are going to at least go over to Alma Moon before we do end this episode off. But I will start, um talking about what I think. Oh, actually, I was right. Thankfully, I did make sure of that. Um, what's that rumbling noise, Ollie boy? It ain't your stomach, is it? Um, oh my goodness, look over there. Oh, I completely forgot about the volcano. Uh-oh, that's actually bad. Mmm, darn it, Ollie boy, that ain't good. Um, oh no, Old Smokey is erupting. Yes, it is. Um, Old Smokey, which is actually going to be our next dungeon. I do remember this. And it's definitely going to be a strong dungeon if we're not prepared for it. So we probably should train a little bit before that, which I'll do in between episodes. Since now that we're not in the early game levels anymore, it doesn't matter if I train. I just wanted to get to a point where we were like no longer in the super early levels because the early levels actually really matter but the later levels aren't as important. So now that we're like at a decent point in the game, I feel like training is not going to be um, as important as showing on screen. So for the major training stuff, I'll do off screen, and then we'll just continue like normal once we do episodes like we are, have been doing normally. So with that, let's continue. Hmm, it's a proper volcano over there in the west of Alma Moon. Proper huge it is. I'm no scientist, but I reckon it's the reason this whole region is nice and warm. But it shouldn't be erupting. There's a massive great big boulder blocking the crater to stop the, that thing from happening. Uh, jeepers, do you think it's, um, come loose somehow? After all these hundreds of years, not. Without some serious encouragement, it hasn't. Hmm, that's weird. There's nothing in the old stories about it ever being dislodged before. Hmm. Then it has been... It's an unprecedented disaster we've got our hands on, isn't it? Isn't it? Crikey, Yalma Moon would, could be in danger. Hmm, yes it is. We have to go to Old Smokey. Um, what? We have to put the boulder back and stop the volcano from erupting. You're joking, ain't you? It's as hot as a flipping flip up there. Mon, the desert by here is arctic by comparison. We'll be burnt to cinders. But didn't you bring me here to save the world? True, honestly. We have to go. We have to save Alma Moon. Um, he's right. We passed the trials, didn't we? We can do this. Why, you little... Ha, you little beauties. It's enough to make a grown fairy cry, seeing how far you've come. All right, it's I'm game. Let's save the day onward to old Smokey. Um, all right, let's go. And with that, we actually now know where we're going in the next episode. Old Smokey being the next major dungeon of the game, and also being a major plot point because of the fact that we should be meeting a new face soon when it comes to our characters because they haven't seen a certain character yet, and I remember seeing, remember there being a specific character that shows up on top of Old Smokey. So, with that, thank you all for watching today's episode, have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll be seeing you all in the next episode. So peace out, and with our two new familiars, we're definitely going to have a nice fun time here. So with that, thank you all for watching, have a wonderful rest of your day, and keep being spooky. Peace out. Hey boys and girls, thank you all for watching today's episode. If you liked what you saw today, please leave a like and maybe even subscribe. And hit the bell notification down below. If you guys have any kind of suggestions for games, please put that in the comments down below as well. Thank you all for watching today's episode, and keep being spooky. Peace out, guys.